and Shalom Akim. Again, man, <clears throat> we're gonna do this lesson. Uh, I found out last uh, last Saturday that the live feed that I did um, last week, trust the process, was without without sound, man. It's, it's crazy, man. <laughs> and while I was doing the lesson, it's crazy because while I was doing the lesson, I was talking about how Satan is trying to hinder you and mess you up in the spirit and make you feel, make you doubt and all these things. And guess what? He just blocked the whole sound of the whole video, man. So if something's wrong with the sound, please let me know. Then uh, I can see what I can do about it. Because, uh, you know, we don't want to go into the scriptures for hours and then find out that there is no sound. <clears throat> So, y'all wrote this out through the spirit, and I'm just gonna flow, touch on the same topic that I did last week. But y'all wrote this out now with sound, and just flow through the spirit, man. Uh, when I did that live live feed, I wasn't really able to pull scriptures. So the most I, maybe the most I was just like, hey, do it again, but with scriptures and just flow, man. So y'all wrote this out, you know, spirit would hop on me to to touch uh certain topics and to speak about certain things like i was doing also in the in the live lesson without sound i was actually speaking about certain personal things that i went through so i hope this is going to be edifying so before i start off i want to give all praises glory the highest honor to yahweh basham yahweh shai basham the bonds to the other parts of great millstone peace and salutations to the elect out there spreading this word is sincerity and the truth all over the four corners of the earth so if your brothers can let me know if y'all hear me then uh then we can start off the lesson man you know or if there are any problems uh please let me know so let's see um the reason i, I named this video yes satan we trust in the process that's exactly the reason man can a throw up throw up Hey, Tawada, Akian, Tawada, for letting me know, man. <laughs> this is crazy, man. So the reason I say yes, Satan, yes, Satan, we we trust the process is because Satan was trying to mess, uh, messed up the life feed, the last life feed, and um, that week, you know, went through a lot of hell, uh, trying to figure things out, you know, mentally, you you dealing with certain things. And um, what you really need to get back to and what you really need to repeat in your mind if Satan is messing you up like that is that you need to trust in the process. Yahweh Bashem Shai does everything according to his will, according to his steps. He's been guiding you towards this truth ever since you were small, man. You have to understand that. If you, uh, I often speak with brothers about this topic that when you come in this truth after a year or two, you realize like, hey, wait a minute. So these things that was happening in my life, the most I guided me towards this truth, man. I just came back from jogging and I was jogging uh, past by the Marine uh, base where I was stationed at. And that made me think again about the, the things I, I went through, man. You know, it's just a process and more and, and, and at that moment it might be like why is this happening why why is this happening unto me? But the most I is fixing you up, man. The most I is making you stronger, the most I is fixing fixing you up, the most I wants you to learn certain things. You know? So um, um let me start with Galatians chapter six. Verse 7, be not deceived, the most high is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So what we got to do is we got to feed the spirit, man. We got to constantly feed the spirit. 
keep reading. This is the food, man. That's why Yahweh said, I got water that will never make you thirsty again. That's why the scriptures, throughout the scriptures, you read that it's referring to meat. It's referring to bread. It's referring to the living water. The brother posts the scripture, um, Romans 5 and 3. Romans 5 and 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that the tribulations work at patience. Yeah, man. So we, we these tribulations is, is what makes us, man. It's what makes us. I remember, man, back in the days in the world, I was angry at my father, man. You know, you know the curses is on Jake. So I was angry at my father, man. And uh and when I was angry, I said certain things. You know, uh, and uh and then my father told me, like, so isn't that what made you the man that you are today? All these things that you went through? And then I looked at him and I was like, yeah, I I, I wouldn't want to be a different person that I am right now. Because it made me tough. It made me, you know, deal with emotions and, and, and all kinds of things. And that's exactly what the most I put you into, man. The most I knows what you need, you know? The most I knows what you need. And you got to put your faith in that. You got to put your trust in that. And while you're putting your trust in that, you got to feed the spirit, man. You got to feed your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So you keep keep walking in righteousness. And, 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 and put away that doubt, man. So this is the point, verse 9. And let us not be wary in well-doing. So even though Satan is trying to mess you up on, on all kinds of sides... Because today I made a lesson, it's called um, The Battle is On. Because for real, man, videos would have would be pulled down because of hate speech, so to speak. Hate speech and community, uh, what is it? Um, copyright strikes, right? GMS videos will, uh, uh, were, uh, will be in, uh, were being taken down because of those things. But now, news articles, news uh, uh, alternative news, prophecies come in the past, all is being taken down, man. I made a video about this uh, this pandemic. Esau took it down. Then I was like, well, where's this video at? So I uploaded it again. Then big in the screen, it said, yeah, too bad, man. It, it got deleted. So I was like, huh? But you don't trick me like that. So I started editing the video. <laughs> make make the make the so-called ai think that it's a different video so they left it up and i made a you know a bit a little bit soft title that they don't spark up and be like hey pandemic what you what you talking about right and then they take it down so now we are in certain times wherein esau doesn't allow no shit man esau doesn't allow no shit satan is constantly messing you up trying to mess you up trying to make you doubt trying to make you a uh, 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 feel down but guess what we got we got the prayers man we got prayers hebrew prayers uh uh, uh wherein you ask uh for the for the for for, for a heavier spirit of tr uh, of trust and faith you know i have a prayer it's on uh, quick prayers i have a playlist called quick prayers in hebrew um when you feel down you have a prayer for that so we gotta keep Continue in this faith and 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 um and trusting your Hashem Yahshai. So it says Galatians six and nine, and let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. So that's what it says, man. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now why does it say if we faint not? It wouldn't. The scriptures wouldn't speak about fainting if if all these things was gonna be easy, man. If 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 there were not gonna be any points wherein you're gonna feel weak, you're gonna feel tired, you uh, you're gonna feel like giving up. The scriptures wouldn't wouldn't speak about fainting if that was not the, not gonna be the case, man. That feeling, <clears throat> so that feeling, uh, that feeling will come, man. But guess what, Jehovah Hashem Yahshua is pulling you through things and making you learn from that and it might not feel good or joyous like the scriptures say at that certain point in time but you got to trust in Yahweh man with all thy heart like the scripture says man 
So let me read it one more time, Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Weary, meaning becoming tired. What is well-doing? Pushing his word out for Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Let Satan not get that advantage over you to mess you up, man. And I was speaking about it today also, like, um, I, once I made a video um, about biblical facts, uh, uh, I went in the book of Daniel, touched on all the prophecies that actually came to pass and is written down in history in the Apocrypha, the, the book of Maccabees. I went in it for like two hours. I pressed stop to, to finish the video. Guess what happened? Nothing. It, the, the program basically basically showed me like, hey, you didn't record anything. Meanwhile, I'm 100% sure I was recording. So these things is, is things that Satan is trying to get you with. Like Satan is, is mad childish, man. Mad childish. There was, there was moments wherein I was studying with the brothers on Skype. And then um, uh, the, whole, the whole Skype session gets fucked up and messed up. And then uh, we say, hey, man, Satan is, is, is messing up again, man. And then he, he just closed the whole Skype program. Just the whole thing gets shut down. We we started back up again. Then then we laughing, right? Because Satan is playing around. Satan is like a child, man. Satan is like a child. That's why you, 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 you got to look at these Edomites, right? To understand the behavior of Satan is it's, it's reflecting on these Edomites, man. Like uh, when they see you do something, they want to call the authorities. They want to call the cops, snitch on you, you know, when, uh, when you're not doing your job good. Instead of telling you, they run in to tell the boss what you just did and stuff like that. That's childish, man. Why don't you just tell me in my face? So that's the behavior of Satan, right? So we started Skype back up, continued the lesson, was laughing. Basically, we was laughing at Satan. And then he shut my whole computer down. My screen went red. My screen, the screen of my laptop became red. I never seen that ever in my life, a red screen. So then I was like, you know what? There are all kinds of ways that you can still communicate with each other, even though you have a, a, a childish spirit of messing you up like Satan. So you just got to keep going, man, and put your faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahushai and whatever you go through, stay, uh, stay, um, keep your trust in Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Trust the process, man. Everything is to build you up. So now, I'm going to tell something. I don't know if I'm going to say it, but I just, I, I'm, I am going to say it for the edification. Uh, the first Passover that I had um, being in this truth was six six years ago. I think it was six years ago. And uh, what happened was uh, I was I was very I was an impatient dude, man. Back in the days in the world in the streets, I didn't repeat myself for nobody. You could have been some some crazy drug drug dealer. I didn't give a shit. I wouldn't. I wouldn't repeat myself for nobody. So I was a very impatient dude, man. If you didn't hear, if you didn't listen, okay, too bad for you. I was like that, and that's that's that worldly spirit. So what does the scripture say? Put out, put off that old man. So I knew that that was my uh, was my um, bad side. So I prayed to Yahweh Bashan Yahusha on the Pesach, which is the high holy day. And I asked the Heavenly Father to give me patience, to grant me the spirit of patience. Now, it took a while for me to understand what actually happened, but guess what the Heavenly Father did? The Heavenly Father placed me in a house with the camp leader, the camp leader of GMS Holland. We, 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 we went and, and, and uh, uh, rented the house together. We lived together. And, uh, but guess what? The brother, uh, the camp leader of GMS Holland, he has bad hearing. So he, he needs to wear hair, everything and stuff. Um, so me as a man that was in the world, impatient, coming into the truth, not wanting to repeat myself for nobody, now has to repeat myself constantly because a brother that doesn't hear it good, 
he's like, I, I say something, he's like, huh, what you say? And then I repeat myself again, and he'd be like, I don't, I don't get it, man. Can explain it different. You know, certain words he doesn't know because as a man that uses sign language and reads lips, you know, the vocabulary is not, it's not that wide. So then in the beginning, of course, it was like, I don't want to repeat myself. But then I just got over it. And, you know, through the spirit, his, his prayer was being answered also because he asked the most high if a brother in the camp could learn sign language, you know, so I was trying to deal with this patience and trying to fix a way that I don't have to repeat myself and make myself understandable to this brother. So one one day he came home and I said I I, I told the brother like hey uh, come come sit with me I had some whiskey and stuff and I told him like uh, teach me sign language man and he said hey call Allah me how about you he was like yes call Allah me how about you me how about because his his prayer was being answered. But without knowing, my prayer was being answered also. But the Most High didn't just grant me uh, the spirit of patience. The Most High put me in the situation where I was going to learn to be a patient man. You know, so you just have to trust in the process, man. Then another thing that happened was um, at my job, certain things changed, changed which, which really messed me up in the mind. I was like, now, I don't want this thing to happen. I really don't want this thing to happen. If this thing happens, I'm going to quit. This and this and that. I had a mentality like that. Then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to just do it. Eventually, it turned out to be the best steps in my so-called career in this in this world, right? The most I just arranged it perfectly to, to get me away from, from, from uh, worldly, worldly type of jigs and just be focusing on what I have to do, my job, and... and, and um, where he pushed me into was a place where I could constantly make videos during the day, man. During the day, during my job, while I was doing my job, I could make videos constantly. And through the spirit of Yahweh, I, I still can make videos while I'm at, at work, man. And I'm not on a, on, no, on no lunch break. I'm just working. And I, and I drive somewhere and I just do a lesson. So I'm thankful that Yahweh put me in a situation like that. But in order for me to be in that uh, the, uh, um, in that situation today, I had to trust. I had to trust the Heavenly Father, uh, His decisions, man. Because the Most High decides everything. I had to trust in that. If I didn't trust in that, I would have went against my own spirit, uh, against the the spirit that was working, and I would try to do everything that I can to, to make it not happen like how the most I wanted, to, wanted it to happen. And then guess what? It, it might have turned out differently, man. I wouldn't be where I am right now. So that's, that's during this, this truth. That's what happens during this truth constantly, man. Constantly. And you got to trust in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh man. And just let him, let, let him take the steering wheel, man. Let, just let him take the steering wheel and just drive, man. Go with the flow. So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in Yahweh. So you got to be unmovable, man. You got to be unmovable in the spirit. Trust in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh and, and let him do what he wants to do. But be sharp. Be sober-minded, like the scripture says. You got to understand what's going on. You got to work with a spiritual eye. When you see you, you are vexed, you woke up vexed, you know, you, you feel frustrated or whatever, you have to understand that Satan sees that. Satan now knows like, okay, so this man is feeling this way today. He's going to take advantage of that. He's going to take advantage of that, man. Why do you think that females in this truth, like so-called wives of men in this truth, always turn out to be demons, man? Why do you think that is? Because Satan uses them. If this woman is the closest one to you, you got yourself in check. 
then Satan is like, okay, well, then I just jump, jump on your wife, man. Then I just jump on your kids. They misbehave just to mess you up, man. That's what it's all about, man. That's why the, the video I made today was called The Battle is On. Satan is going to do everything in his power to, to mess you up, man. But guess what? Like I said, you got to be steadfast. You got to be unmovable. Let me read it again. That's what the scripture says, by the way. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Like the other scripture says, lest ye faint. So you shouldn't allow these setbacks and these afflictions to take hold on you. You should just stay in the spirit and keep it moving, man. Now, if you look at if you look back at your life, what you went what you went through, uh, what you had to deal with, um, maybe you was you was a, a, a talented uh, athlete, and then things didn't work out as planned. You know, you had setbacks, and then people people was messing you up in the team and uh, try to uh, uh, let their friends uh, go before you and stuff like that, like friend. Friend, friend, uh, friend, politics within within the sports that shit happens, man. If you got a bag of money, you know people that actually don't deserve it, they get a step higher. For me, speaking about myself, I was into baseball. You know, I was I was in the first team of twins here in Holland, uh, uh, the baseball team uh, playing uh, top class baseball, and. Um, while I was doing these things, they wanted to put me into this uh, into this um, baseball school. But eventually, with letters and things went wrong, and then eventually, I, it was canceled. And it messed me up, of course, because I just wanted to go go to school and go training at the same time. Every day baseball, every day school. That for me, that was perfect, man. As a, as a young athlete. But the most I didn't didn't want it to happen like that because, like the scripture also says, let me grab it real quick to back up my point. This is uh, Ecclesiastes, um, Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse seven. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyed the heart. A, a gift destroyed the heart. That's the point I want to make. Like, it can be a gift that someone gives you and then you give false judgment. For example, you have to put judgment or you have to bring out judgment or your, your opinion. And then he, this this man is, is giving you gifts and stuff. Your mind is, is going to be altered because of that. But also a gift, which, is, which, which can be a talent. It can also alter your mind. Your mind state is going to be towards that that talent instead of uh, towards Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. If you are a talented boxer, but you come into this truth, what you gonna choose? What you gonna choose? You gonna choose for the boxing, or you gonna choose for for this truth? Because you can't be here on on on, on ESPN uh, 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 doing your boxing. Meanwhile, you you a man in the highways and byways wearing your fringes. Teaching the word for your Abba Shemar Shad, that's not gonna work, man. That's not gonna work. You can't eat from two pies, man. You gotta choose either the one or the other. So even in that case, you losing what you thought was you was your was your um security. Because us Jakes in this world, we need that security, we need that talent, we need that skill. For example, sports or making music or making beats. Or, 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 you know, these things. We need that because there's not much left for us to, to achieve something so-called in this in this world, man. Un, un, um, unless we use our, our, our talents that the Most High has given us. So you're trying to hold fast to that, to that talent that you have. But then the Most High is trying to take you away from that. And then you, you, you might be in a situation that you'd be like, no, no, I don't want to lose this. But hey, trust the process, man. And that's something I had to do myself too, man. If I look back, man, the most I set everything up in order, man. You know? 
The most has set everything up in order. Let me grab a couple of scriptures, um, which I had to look up. Um, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 11, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Yahushai our Lord, in whom we have boldness and uh, uh, access with confidence by faith of him. So we got to have confidence. We got to stay bold. We got to we got to put our our full trust in Yahweh Shemel Shai, man. You know these um, these stern athletes or, or, or even these cheerleaders, man. What they do is when they when they throw each other in the air and stuff and do all these flips, they have to trust in the people that catch them. People in the circus, they have to trust in their colleagues uh, that they work with that they don't fall and that they catch them. The same way we got to trust in Yahweh Bashem Shai, man. Because if we don't put our trust in Yahweh Bashem Shai, we land on the ground, man. We fall and we die. You see? Just like that man in the circus. If he doesn't believe that this man is going to catch him, that doubt is going to creep in. And when that doubt creeps in, everything that you do with doubt is going to fail, man. When that doubt creeps in, that's when you're gonna land on the uh, on the on the ground, man, and you, you're gonna die, man. Being in a circus, you're gonna fall on the ground from that height. You die, man. You see, the same thing is with us, man. If we don't put our full faith and trust in our Hashem Yahshai, we're gonna fall, man, and die. And that's not what we want. So it says, according to the eternal purpose which He purposed in Yahweh Shai, our Lord, in whom we have boldness. And access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you. Which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jehovah Shai. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. You see? So we got to keep keep trusting. Keep putting our faith in Yahweh Shem Shai. Regardless what you went through in your life. You got to keep, keep moving, man. So this is um, Proverbs. Proverbs 16. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. A man's heart devised it this way, but Yahweh directed his steps. You see, the Heavenly Father directs your steps. So you might think like, no, you, you don't want it to happen this this way or that way. The Heavenly Father is, 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 is directing it, man. There is something over there. Where are you going to learn? You're going to be like, ah, I don't want to go there. I just, just want to go there, man. But the most time is like, no, just go there because there's going to be something over there where you learn from it's all a process of learning the most High is perfecting us in this truth so you have to go through these things man if you want to learn you you're gonna if you want to be perfected in the spirit as a man of the lord you're gonna have to go through these things man. nobody said it was going to be easy how does it do you think do you think that a boxer when you look at him in the ring on TV and he's slipping all the punches, do you think he never got hit? Do you think he never got hit during training? He had to take a lot of punches for him to, to, to perfect that te technique to not get hit, man. He had to eat a lot of punches to become, uh, 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 um, uh, to specialize his technique like that. But you might, you might sit at home with your, with your fat belly, thinking like, hey, this man, he has cat-like reflexes, right? He had to eat a lot of punches for him to become like that. That same way, we got to eat a lot of punches that, of course, Satan directs to our face with the authority of Yahweh. Because the most that allows these things to happen, so we, we learn and we become stronger. Because really, before you can be a man of the Lord, you got to be a man first. So, in this truth, is also a process of becoming a man. And a man takes care of his own, uh, uh, takes care of his business. 
you know. This is Sirach chapter 2 verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. Which the word endure goes to the word um, durare, which is Latin, which means to become hard. So we have to become hard. There is a technique that these Shaolin, that these, um, not Shaolin monks, that these uh, Kung Fu artists do, which is the cat's claw technique. You can look it up. Cat's claw technique. They don't fight with fists. They don't fight with, with uh, flat hands or crazy shit. They, they fight with, uh, with their hands like claws. But what they do is they constantly hit the wall with the tips of their fingers. And they constantly hit it. They keep hitting it, hitting it. And the, the tips of their fingers, the bones break. Then they let it heal. Then they break it again. They let it heal. Then they break it again. Eventually, if this man smacks you in the face with this tiger claw technique, it, it feels like a punch, man. It's, it's going to be even harder than a punch because it has multiple points where it, where it strikes you. So that's why they call it the tiger claw technique. Because if a tiger smacks the shit out of you, he rips the, the meat off your face, man. You see the skin off of your face. So my point with this is you being broken down in the spirit and build up again makes you stronger. You know, so that's the process that the Heavenly Father is creating within the men of the Lord that are teaching His word for Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, but also the people that are trying to do the best they can for Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. You know, even, even if they are not teachers, Satan is going to try you. Verse 3, cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at the last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low state. So if you if you are dealing with certain things during the week and you don't know how to solve it or you don't know how to deal with it, just be patient, man. Because eventually the Heavenly Father is just going to guide you out of it, man. But he wants you to see certain things. I posted this picture today, or it was yesterday, and it said... Um, over small over a small discussion the heavenly father can show you what people really think about you now you might not like the discussion that pulled up which turned into a fight but now you know what this person really thinks of you man and now you can see and, and observe and treat this person the way he is he, he he was thinking of you man certain people you got to keep on a distance man you know and, I, and i'm talking about people in the world because while we are in this truth, while we are walking this faith, it might feel lonely and you might want to have certain comfort and, and uh, how you call that? Company. But really, this truth is a lonely path, man. Let me, let me grab that real quick in the book of Psalms. This is Psalms chapter 102, verse 6. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Now, what is a pelican doing in the in the wilderness? A pelican is not in the wilderness. A, pe a pelican is going to be by the seashore. That's where all the pelicans is going to be at. But if you find a pelican in the wilderness, he's going to be on his own. That's like how we are in this truth. We it's a lonely path. We, we do have the brothers. We do have brothers that we chill with and talk with and, and, and share our problems with, our burdens with. But really, end of the day, you got to deal with your shit, man. You got to deal with the, the afflictions and the adversity that we are catching uh, within this truth, man, within this path. You got to deal with it, man. Nobody is going to deal with it for you. You know, and sometimes you see, you might see a brother broken down in the spirit and you look at him and be like, I wish there was a way that I could take that, that feeling from you and, and deal with it for you. But you, you can't, man. You just got to look at him while he, he maybe shed some tears. You just got to look at him and be like, hey, this is only going to make you stronger, man. Trust in the process. You know? 
And the only reason I, I said in the, in the title, yes, Satan, we trust in the process is because Satan doesn't want you to trust in the process. Satan wants you to faint. Satan wants you to break. But we got to have the mentality that Job had, man. Let me finish this up real quick. Psalms 102 verse 6. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an awl of the desert. I watch. And so let me touch on the awl. A awl is not in the desert. A awl is in the, for in the forest. You see? So if you see an awl in the desert, he's going to be on his own. Because that's not his natural habitat. Okay, the same thing goes for us. We are, we are on our own. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Sometimes you, you walk the streets, right? You see one bird sitting lonely upon the rooftop, you know, just minding his business, man. That's how we are, man. You yourself are the only man that can deal with the things that you go through. But you have your Haobashim Yashai that's guiding you through it. So you got to put your faith in him. So you get that strength. Otherwise, Satan is going to put his spirit upon you, which is going to mess you up. So why I pointed out Job is because Job was getting messed up by Satan. We all know the story, Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, wherein you see that Satan touched his, uh, his uh, the things that he had, his family, his children. He put his children to death. Uh, then he was uh, he was uh, uh, beating Job up so bad, his, he was wounded from from head to toe. He he was full of boils, which boils are, um, uh, how you call that? Pimples underneath the skin. Boils are pimples underneath the skin, right? Come on. Yeah, big big pimples underneath the skin that you're not able to bust. It's it needs it's an infection. It needs to be cut open. Job was was dealing with a situation like that, so that could have messed him up, right? That could have made him angry towards the heavenly Father. Like, why am I in this situation? I, I've been doing whatever I can to please thee, but Job didn't do that. Job just trusted the process, man, and knew that Yahweh Shemuel Shai was gonna help him anyway, eventually. Plus, he knew that in this world and in this life, we have to go through straight and vain things like the Apocrypha says. So what did Job say? This is Job chapter, uh, chapter 2 verse 9. Um, let me start at 7. So when Satan fought from the presence of Yahweh and smote Job with sore boils, from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a parcher to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes. So Job was completely destroyed. He was sitting there dealing with his dealing on his own. He was sitting on his own. Just like I told you, like only he himself was able to deal with the things that he was going through. No one else. And even though there came certain brothers... To, to comfort him and to speak to him, he himself knew and felt what he what he had to deal with and what he was going through, man. You see, because you had Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. Um, am I am I three friends? Yeah, the three friends of of Job were Eliphaz, uh, Bildad, and Zophar. They came to comfort him, but he he knew what was going on. He knew what was going on. He knew what he had to deal with. He himself knew it. That's why I say only you know what you're going through and what you have to deal with to become a better man in Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. So this is Job 2 and 8. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain that integrity? Curse the Most High and die. So that's what I was explaining earlier, man. Satan is going to jump upon your wife. You, you better know that and realize that. Don't think that your wife is all righteous and Satan is not going to have access to her. Because the scriptures reveal to these females as the weaker vessel. So Satan is going to use them as an advantage against you to mess you up. How you, how, however you twist or turn it, 
Satan is going to use her against you. And the same thing happened to Job, which Job was called, was, was being called a friend of the Most High. He was an acceptable man in the eyes of Yahweh. It's like uh, um, Abraham was called the friend of the Most High. But Job was, was a very acceptable man in the eyes of the Heavenly Father, man. So, demon jumped upon his wife too. Satan jumped upon his wife also. So, are you better than Job? Ask yourself that. No, you're not. So, your wife is going to have demons too that is going to mess up, mess you up. Don't, don't ever say, oh, my wife is righteous. She, she in the truth, this and this and that. Because she ain't. Solomon did an experiment, right? Th a thousand men. From a thousand men, he found one righteous man. And out of a thousand women, he only he, he, found, he found zero. So like, yeah, I almost slipped with the tongue. Out of a thousand females, he found zero that were righteous. Now, if he would have t taken a th 10,000, there would still be zero. You see? 10,000 times zero is still zero. A million times zero is still zero. Okay? First 10. So, hey... That doesn't mean that these females ain't going to be saved. That doesn't mean that. That doesn't mean that. Because a, a, the, the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. So females, yeah, of course females is going to be saved. Because how else are we going to uh, repopulate this earth? But this is the point. Verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we not receive shall we receive good at the hand of the most high and shall we not receive evil? And all this did Job did not Job sin with his lips. So that's just the truth, man. We're gonna go through things, man. How however you twist or turn it, you're gonna go through things and you're gonna have to deal with it and, and trust the process at the same time. Because why? I was reading the book of Sirach, right? The point in the book of Sirach was this. Sirach chapter 2, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. So if the Most High deems you to be an ex ex uh, acceptable man, he is going to pull you through the fire. I was talking about this last Saturday in the camp. Like when you pull out gold from the mountains, the gold is going to look impure. It's going to have rocks, sand. It's gonna be uh, cracked up, you know. It's gonna uh, it's gonna be like a, 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 a sand lump, a, a, a sand dried sand. But then when you melt it, it becomes smooth. It it becomes more shiny. The 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 the, the dirt is off, and you're gonna see the beauty of this gold. So we, but in order to to be, become beautiful like that, it had to go in a very hot furnace or oven whatever you want to call it and that's a very difficult process for gold if you were that gold you 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 would have to go through that heat right that's that heat now we are going through that same heat if we are an acceptable man because we are being referred to as gold we have to go through it gold is tried in the fire an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity which is the, the, the life we're going through. You know, so don't faint, but just keep going and trust in the process. Let me see what 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 did I want to grab, man? Um damn. Before I had this rock, I was thinking about the scripture. So I read about Bondi take cheerfully. Yeah, man, I think that's pretty much it, man. We have the scriptures as an example. And uh, what does the scripture say? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not upon thine own understanding. So you don't know what's best for you. The Heavenly Father knows what's best for you. So if the Heavenly Father knows what's best for you, he, he's going to reveal it eventually unto you. And if you, if you, if you were stubborn as Jake, which Jake is always stubborn, 
you're gonna have a hard and difficult time, man, because the most that can easily show you true brothers what is going on, man. These brothers, maybe they, they don't even know your situation. But then all of a sudden they say like, hey, where were you yesterday? What was going on? Why why your face? Why why is your face like that? Are you dealing with certain things, man? You wanna talk about it? Then you be like, nah, nah, nah I don't wanna talk about it, man. I don't wanna talk about it. And then eventually they might still pull up with that thing that you actually don't want to talk about and bring out all the information and and they might even cut you with your behavior or the way you're handling things. And that is the most high speaking, man. It might be a brother that you know in this truth, but that's the most high speaking through him. Telling you what 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 what's going on. If you standing next to men in the camp. If you're standing next to men in the camp that you believe the Most High is dealing with, that you believe that they are teachers of Yahweh Hashem Shai, if you believe that, then you should take their advice too when they speak unto you. Because then the Most High can speak through them also. Just like how He speaks through them in the camp, He speaks through them to you. That's how it works, man. This is uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 15. Let us therefore fear. As many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, the Most High shall reveal even this unto you. So the Most High is going to reveal it unto you, man. If you are otherwise minded, the Most High is going to show you through his men what's going on. The Most High is not going to come down and talk to you face to face like he did with Moses. He's not going to do that. Yahusha is not going to do that. Like he did with the Apostle Paul. You know? He's going to speak through men. There's an order. Set up by Yahweh Basham Yahshai. We see it, man. It's clear. It's clear as day. You know, we got we to gotta understand that if you need to be corrected, you will. But if you are a stubborn motherfucker, you're not going to take it. And, and every... Let me just be straight, man. If you watch GMS videos, you should be cut every day because... Everyone makes mistakes and you always do things that are not right because you're dealing with this with this wicked ass flesh. So a brother might go into a certain topic and he'll be like, man, yeah, man. Gotta step my game up, man. I gotta make more videos. I gotta read more. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, he might touch on certain topics that cut you, man. But that's that correction that comes from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, because it's being being done by his word because what what does the scripture say the, the scripture is given for reproof rebuke correction and righteousness okay so before i close it out let me read some scriptures that the brothers has put the brother malach which that is actually malak in the hebrew malak which means king so I'm going to call you Malak, Malak 23, Ecclesiasticus, which is the book of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 26. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health. And hate thou abomination vehemently, which that's one of my, not, I, I wouldn't say favorite scriptures, but I like that scripture a lot. Because if you look at that word vehemently, it says with an intense manner. So that's how you're supposed to look at look at sin, man. That's how you that's how you're supposed to look at wickedness. You gotta you gotta um, despise it vehemently. Hate thou abominate. You gotta hate it vehemently with an intense manner because that's how the heavenly Father hates uh, uh, um, wickedness, man. Abomination, filth. Which is wickedness. The brother also put um, James chapter 5 verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another. That ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. That faileth much. Yeah man that's why man. Yahweh keep putting up these prayers. I'm looking for a couple of prayers. That I can add onto the playlist. Um, and translate into the Hebrew. Uh, as a comfort unto your brothers. So ye, ye may pray in the Lashwan Kwadash and uh, 
which is of course more powerful is the holy tongue is the hebrew so um, that you may continue in the faith and keep pushing with your Hashem Yahshua and stay faithful in all your ways of doings every each and every day of this uh, of this wicked kingdom man and beyond that because we in the kingdom is going to be automatic it's going to be like blinking trusting in your Hashem Yahshua is going to be like blinking you know when your Hashem Yahshua opens our minds and give us that full brain capacity and knowing all these things. That's why we're going to have spiritual powers too, man. The Most High is going to open up all knowledge within our minds. We're going to be extraordinaries. Extraordinary, uh, Slakya. Extraterrestrials, I mean. Extraterrestrial people. That's what we're going to be. People with powers. People that don't die. People that don't get sick. Believe that, man. And trust in that and aim towards that. While you are running this race, you know, I know that the most I will put you in certain situations that you might not like, but you will be placed there anyway, whether you like it or not. Now I remember what scripture I was going to pull, and I'm going to close it out with that. This is Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the, like confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. That we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the Most High. So we have to go through much tribulation. And the, the times of tribulation uh, aren't even here yet. People is already stabbing, stabbing each other up for, for a piece of uh, toilet paper in the time of Corona. But this is nothing, man. This is just the stage is set by Esau. But the, the more, most perilous times, the Most High is still going to unleash upon this earth, man. The scriptures speak about the plagues of Egypt is going to come back. The plagues of Egypt is going to come back, man. People is going to be terrorized by monstrous figures, by, by demons, by, by, by sicknesses, ailments, that they're going to die from famine. You know, so we haven't seen tribulation yet. But the Most High is perfecting you in the spirit, making you a man of the Lord, acceptable in his sight. You see? Trust in the process. Yes, Satan, we trust in the process. He, he ain't supposed to be able to mess you up, man. You know? He ain't supposed to be able to mess you up. Just keep your faith in Abba Shem Yashai and keep trusting in him. And you will you will you will be you will be okay, man. You know, so with that I'm a sikal alayim, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Kakadash. Shall I want to the elect out there? Shall I want to the brothers and sisters out there that tuned in to this video? You know, stay strong, keep your faith. And keep going, keep pushing, man. Shalom.